Well, hello, racing fans, and uh, a warm welcome to our Gallup TV preview show for Thursday, the 28th of March, where we'll kick things off with a long weekend uh, and holidays. That's what it is. It's happy holidays uh, over Easter. And uh, let's have a look at what they have on the betting menu. I trust that you're well and you're looking forward to this weekend uh, racing wherever you are listening into this Gallup TV preview. Before we chat to Alistair Cohen, uh, the betting menu on the Val racetrack is nine races on the go. So the exotics will begin in race number two. It's at 12.50, 10 to 1. And uh, we'll see what Alistair Cohen has got in store for us. Looking forward to this preview. I think the Hollywood Belt Punters Challenge competition will get a sizable entry for this race meeting, considering the size of the fields. Alistair Cohen, uh, a very good day to you. And, uh, yep, uh, hopefully you can kick things off with an absolute flyer on this Thursday for the long weekend. I trust you well. Yeah, good day, Dees. Good day to all the viewers. Um, yeah, it's obviously the start of a long weekend, Easter, um, this weekend. So it'll be uh, a lovely start to proceedings. To talk about the Hollywood Bets Punters Challenge, spare a thought to those three punters at Hollywood Bets oh. Kenilworth on Tuesday. They had Speed Racer <laughs> going into the final league and just got nabbed over the closing stages. But uh, they'll be back to fight again. As far as this card is concerned, these are far less intimidating than the other ball cards that we've seen this month. No bulging fields, no 20 runner races to uh, to wade your way through. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable and happy with, uh, with what's in front of us. And hopefully we can, as you say, get off to a good start for the long weekend. Well, let's get straight into it then, Alistair. Work riders maiden plate will kick things off over 1,000 meters. As always, horses in single figures. Number one is at 7 to 2. Uh, horse number seven, um, had a look at the site, uh, now eight to one from 20 to one. Number eight is at eight to one. Nine is at seven to two. Uh, Ten at five to one and 11 is at nine to two. Just like having a look at the way they've priced up here, Alistair, the, the Phillies seem to dominate the betting. Not a pretty start to the card at all, Dees. It's a work riders made in plate. Generally, you see a standout when it comes to work riders made in plates wherever they are, whether it's uh, Joburg, PE or Cape Town. And here, there's absolutely no standout. Thankfully, it's not part of the exotics. I remember the mother of this number seven, what a predator, Majorji. She was well-performed in Flamingo Park Sand. Dennis Kaysen didn't run a horse for nearly a year because uh, severe rain damaged his tracks. I think his first runner was earlier this month, which earned a check also in the work riders' races. Um, but uh, I think the horse that I'm most inclined to have a look at is number 11, Eve's Apple, under Tapiso Matsuela for Fabian Habib, informed combination, um, drawn in the middle. There was money for her on debut. I have no real gauge for anything. I mean, Together Again's exposed, and Kanla Gold's exposed, Pala Millions is exposed, Pearl Harbor's exposed, Pat Man is getting exposed. So they're not going anywhere quickly, although they might have a win in them. Uh, I think the improvement for number 11, Eve's Apple, is the most interesting. Is she worth the win bet? Absolutely not. But I think that she can very easily get into the top three, just judging by the support there was for her first time out. Well, you heard it from Alistair. Maybe Eve's Apple could be the rover in the race, and uh, he's not going on the way she ran, but purely on the fact that she was supported, so must have been quite defensive. And she does race with the tongue tie on. I see that is the equipment change there. But keep an eye on the betting market for the first time as you up in race number one. Now the exotics will begin in race number two, which is the start of the bar pot. It's a maiden juvenile plate over 1,200 meters. There's some action in the betting here, Alistair. I'll read it out to you. Number one uh, has taken a walkabout. That's eight to one. Number two, from 11 to two into 33 to 10. Horse number four is at seven to two. Uh, number six has attracted some money. Nine to two into five to two. Eight is at five to one. And nine is at nine to two. Yeah, we got the first timers here that, uh, you know, if betting is to be a guide, then maybe numbers two and six could be the horses to follow. But uh, can we see another added to that list of horses debuting and winning for Tony Peter in horse number four? Definitely not a possible these. I think first thing I want to establish in this race is that all the first timers make a degree of appeal, certainly genetically. Um, all of them would have been quite interesting at the sales. You can see there were quite big prices paid for, for all of them. Um, I've got a report to number eight, where he apparently is a very good workhorse as well. So um, the money around for certain horses is no surprise, but 
I'd like to see a little bit more of a follow through come race time before the first leg of the bar pot. In fact, the reason why the bar pot is not my suggested bet is because of this race, because of all the first timers that are involved in the third race, the PA. Um, that is my suggested bet. That looks a little bit more shallow, and I think we can go with the form on offer. The two form horses here have an undeniable chance. Nine Wild at Wall just touched off with his last stop by half an eight by taxi to the moon. He looked dangerous for a while. Gavin Lorena takes over on the Sun Down and Patina. His penultimate start over 14.50. He, he just ran out of puff quite tamely over the closing stages. Back down the straights, he seems to be a better horse, so he'll go well. Four gorgeous climb. Um, as you mentioned, first run for Tony Peter, having come up from Sharon Cox and Abercha. Got to have a good chance. The form lines are awfully quiet for now. Um, but the son of One World might grow an extra leg on the half belt, so he definitely bears watching as well. But I respect all the first timers. Any late money that comes through, I'd throw them into the bar pot, but I wouldn't write off any of the experience runners here, or the experience under the form in the form of numbers four and nine. Four and nine for Alistair could be the way to go. Just go with the experience. And uh, let's have a look at uh, the source number four, Gorgeous Claim come race day uh, from 7 to 2 priced up if drifts out or supported in I think that could be the key uh, to him running a good race first time out or maybe just in need of it but the racing fitness is not an issue here the horse less run on the 23rd of February so it's just over a month on to the start of the place accumulator which is race number three 1200 meters maiden juvenile played for Phillies and um, we'll have a look at the betting again, Alistair. It is the start of the place accumulator. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that that is your chosen bet uh, for the race meeting. Number one, six to one. Number four, 18 to 10. Number five is at nine to two. Uh, then we got number seven. Uh, that's at three to one from nine to two. And eight is at seven to one. And I'll tell you what, there, there is some, you know, form to work with here. Uh, because uh, on debut, uh, Take Your Place was beaten by the stable companion. And I know that the, the horse that ran back in third, who hasn't run yet, called Mon Mountain High from the Sean Terry stable, ran a good race. That's number one. And then number two, uh, the f number five, uh, a Tipperary. Uh, that wasn't the worst of run. And, and that horse, Golden Chandelier, has come to Hollywood Bets Gravel to win again. Uh, so things are looking, you know... Pretty decent for both those form lines, I would suspect. Although, you know, there hasn't been runners yet for coming out from that form line behind. Take your place. But that was an excellent result for St. John Gray. Yeah, quite right, these. I mean, take your place actually had victory in their sights. And then across the pond came lashing home in the closing stages. And adjacent Gates will now ironically take over on number four. Uh, take your place. The first thing I want to establish here, these is that of the first time, number one, Fiery Pegasus makes the most appeal. Half sister to Captain and Master, multiple winner, and uh, full sister to Shango, who of course won the Dingons in his year and uh, Punk will above his weight throughout his career. So that's the most interesting first timer in uh, in the running of the first leg of the place. Accumulates and moves a Yeni up for Joey Soma, the combination that we never thought we'd see again, but here we are. Um, but the race runners take your place in Tipperary do look to have a strong hand. I think it'll take one of the first timers to be decent to turn them over. Not that I think that they'll need to be a champion. I think both of them will have a degree of vulnerability, but from a PA perspective, four take your place in five Tipperary if I fall short of the first leg. I'd be most disappointed. Tipperary actually put up a lovely debut behind Golden Chandelier. She seemed to run in snatches. I think the experience will do her a world of good. Um, it would be the match at way um, to, to give them the benefit of a first run. There were the two winners at the Vala week earlier that had the experience under the belt, and they actually looked to be reasonably nice also. So Tipperary could uh, qualify in that boat as well. But number four, take your place, deserves her place at the top of the board. A bit of a worry that she went walkabout in the betting first time up. Both of them did. That ran nice race that I'm going with. But, um, yeah, I think that they do stand very good chances in what looks to be a maiden juvenile plate on the less depth than the race earlier. OK, you heard the numbers there from Alistair for race number three. On to the big one, which is race number four. It's big six time over 1,600 metres. The way they're betting here, number one is at 18 to 10. And then horse number 10 is at 12 to 10. The first time Alistair was debuting over 1,600 metres, for MDK and I see Winston Chow, the owner, that's trading at eight to one. And you can also include number six, Hallowed Secret at eight to one. But uh, the bookmakers boards, they have it as a two horse race, numbers one and 10, Alistair. 
And I think that's probably the way to play it. These are banker number 10 Quetta in my place accumulator. Um, obviously, happy Mo ran disappointingly on Saturday, but the two direct winners out of that form line won very weak races. Uh, they were um, Springer, who ran behind Quetta, and also the second horse, Play With Fire, who went down to Hollywood Betts Gravel onto the poly uh, nearly two weeks ago and franked that form. But I uh, like what I saw from Quetta. Of course, the mother was a great one winner in the former Europa Point. She won the Empress Club Stakes at Turpentine under the lights under Anton Marcus. I think she's got a lot of improvement to come. It's not going to be easy running down the bar straight. Um, I've said it a lot of times. It's a it's a track that either you can or you can't. But David Nivenay said, if you think to all the horses that he's had, he, he tends to get them right down the ball straight. He, he knows the secret, whatever secret it might be, to get the best out of them down the ball straight. So number 10, Quetta, strongly my first choice. I must be honest, Eve, when I was looking at this race, I was looking for reasons to get number 10, Quetta, beaten because I thought there might be um, a degree of maybe ring rustiness and, and a question mark about her down the straight, but I don't see anything that entices me to believe that this uh, filly is going to have any vulnerabilities. I would actually make her a pick six banker, um, not only a place accumulator banker. Silky Jet's drawn towards the outside on a track that I don't think you want to be a high number draw. And number two, City Lutz, and she is well and truly exposed. She's become a professional maiden, so I'll be disappointed if she didn't win. Well, Alistair Cohen um, is stamping the way they have uh, priced them up. The two horses at the top of the betting boards. He feels they're the right horses. But quietly confident here with number 10, Quetta, who did go walkabout first time out at 40 to 1. And uh, Gavin Larina was on the winner, Happy Mo. And Alistair did mention that form line. Well, I know it well because play with fire. I must say that Samanga Kamala must be given 10 out of 10 for that win. I know the horse pumped a weak field here at Hollywood Betts Gravel, but she was worked upon around the turn on the poly track and she still won. So know that form line well. And he mentioned Springer as well. So Quetta are going to be the first pick. And uh, you could take a chance, Alistair mentioned, if you're looking for a banker, you don't want to multiply that perm out by two and include number one in leg one, then maybe take a chance and go all in with the 10 confidence given through from Alistair in race number four. Race number five, maiden plate, 1600 meters. It's the start of jackpot one. Number one, due prophecy, that's trading at two to one. Number two, in a blue moon at 22 to 10. Number three at five to one. Scratched is number four, Alistair. We know that that's a winner. Uh, five at four to one. Six at seven to one. And then it is a gelding. I must mention this. Number nine, Global Reef, is gelded. Gelded on the 9th of the 1st, 2024. So uh, we got the scratching of number four, a winner. Ten runners now go to post. Uh, this race, Alistair, can you narrow things down for the pick six? I know the, the place accumulator we'll see at the end of the show, but what about the pick six? Well, these, I've got two horses in the PA and three in the pick six, and I'm actually quite disturbed that number one, Dual Prophecy, is a two-to-one favourite because he is my third horse. The two horses in the PA are numbers two and five, and I'll get to them in a moment. But Dual Prophecy's debut behind San Simon was excellent. Midwinter Wind, who was carded to run in the Bali Turk on Sunday, was behind Dual Prophecy. Um, this, of course, is a, a full brother to see it again. And his second and third starts were not good at all, but gelded, rested, yard now come to life. Um, I can see number one, Dual Prophecy, almost repeating his debut. And if he does, he'll be dangerous. But I've left him out of the place accumulator because of the three horses I've got, he is the one that carries the biggest question mark of whether he's fit enough and whether he's you know kicked on from his first start. So number two, in the Blue Moon and Five Master Ariano, they the two horses that I think are just more solid PA perspectives. Um, in a blue moon, the last run, although in a work rider's maiden, looked a winner all over um, and just got nabbed late by the uh, the tried and tested maiden bolt of fuss. But with that said, in a blue moon's got the profile to suggest that a win's just around the corner. Once upon a time, six and a half lengths of purple pitcher, although purple pitch is a totally different horse now. I still think Inner Blue Moon has got enough in his form line to suggest that he's going to be a big chance. And then number five, Master Ariano, be with me. The guys at the Vol tomorrow are going to be all over Master Ariano. Um, you'll know what they're all about. These Jim Strunk ran in steals last time. It was a stinker. He probably needed the run. He was off for a, for a while, for nearly six months. Um, he'll come on with that run under the belt, number five, Master Ariano. He too, if you took that last run out of the picture, you would make a very, very 
very strong case for the son of Master of Marfet. So I'd like to believe that that last one blew off the cobwebs and with a full set of Alamats, um, there'll be support for him and that he'll run a much, much better race. So I take it it's one, two, five for the pick six, Alistair. Can I jot those numbers down? Put them down, one, two, five, take it to the bank. One, two, five for the pick six there in race number five. Jackpot two, race number six, 1,600 meters. Merit rated 68 handicap. How are they betting here? Well, I, I see these jockey changes. I must mention this at the time of recording. Danielson is riding in the first few races, but yeah, number one is Muzieni. Uh, and then uh, we go on to uh, number three. I see he's got uh, the, the blinkers on. Four, seven to two. Five is at 33 to 10. Six at 15 to 10. Form update for Zumbomba, and number seven, ran fifth, beaten six and a half lengths behind Nuclear Force. Eight is at eight to one, and nine is at 15 to two. Well, this source, Viva de Janeiro, moved up like a winner last time out, Alistair. I thought that was a good return to form at a fair price, and uh, Lorena obviously took uh, notice uh, of the horse, and he's won on the horse before, so is that going to be your first choice at 15 to 10, or you make it a bit more competitive? He is my first race by, by pure default, Sir Dees. It is not a pretty race at all, the start of Jackpot 2. Um, I don't really like Cornello running away from the Turpentine inside track. I know that he's won on the ball before, and I suppose he has to be respected. But I, I, I like what I saw enough of number six, Viva de Janeiro, last time. And if he follows up with that run, he should go close. 15 to 10 is far too short for me. I don't think this is a, a, a bet on the nose race. I think this is a matter of survival. Um, I've backed, her, backed him up with number five, Can't Catch Me, now trained by Brett Weber. Calvin Abib takes her out. Interesting that Calvin's now uh, taking the route of number five, Can't Catch Me. I don't know if there's anything to read into that because Calvin rode Carnello last time, and uh, he also rode Can't Catch me last time and although Mia Fiore won by a long way and it was a commanding win I like what this also brought to Joburg although yet she hasn't won yet she's suggesting that a win is just around the corner she's been kept on the boil by, by Brett Weber in the space of a month this will be her fourth start but she seems to be enjoying her racing um, without the headgear, she seems to be running a bit more consistently. She's obviously no superstar number five, can't catch me, but I'm suggesting that she can at least push the favourite number six, Viva de Janeiro. I've got both horses into the place accumulator. A couple of horses I'd like to suggest for the pick six. I'd, I'd be foolish to, to write off the chances number four, Carnello, but I also think number seven, Zoom Bomb, is going to have a chance with absolutely no weight on his back. Drop a big distance to 1,600 metres. Um, I think that he could be dangerous. He could be the money spinner and run into the top four and, and make things pay. And with a little bit of luck, who knows, he might get his nose in front. But it's it's hard to make a case for him the same way that you can make a case for Khan Kachmi or Viva de Janeiro. Okay, I'll tell you what. It's nine runners. We're going to go with the rule. You've gone five, uh, six, and seven. And I'm going to include one more runner there. I'm jotting this down. We're going five, six, seven. And nine, Green Scepter is going to be my horse there as uh, the Ruffy. So five, six, seven, and nine, four numbers in the pick six. On to race number seven. Seven, eight, and nine could be a good way to end things off. It's the last pick three. It's over 1,600 meters. It's merit rated 80 handicap. Number one, Mardi Gras, blinkers on claim four, eight to one. Then we go on to number five at seven to two. Horse number six, Tycoon for Mike de Kock. 11 to 10, that's the price. And number seven is at four to one, and eight is at six to one. Well, they got this one tight. The handcuffs are on, number six, Ty Canel. In your opinion on the way you could assess uh, the starting price, that means, you know, come race time, do you see this all shortening or drifting out? I think we'll see it the same way. I see him drifting deep. Yeah. I see him drifting a lot. I see him nearly double the price. I'm surprised that he's that short. I can I can have him in the pick six. You can put down my pick six numbers now. There'll be one, five, and six. But I'm quite strong at number five, Kings Express here, these. Um, Kiratina Kachedi takes right inside. Draw is going to do him a lot of good. He's one from one track and trip. He beat George Handel. These George Handel's rated on the 90, not rated 93 now. And he holds an entry for the South African Derby. And by the time this show goes to press, he, he could well be declared in the South African Derby. In fact, knowing Farney Broncos, I'm pretty sure if he's breathing, he'll be declared. Um, so number five, Kings Express got to have a big chance. 
He's been sparingly raced for the last while. Um, I thought his run back at the Vol was graduation plate, although that was obviously a, a race just to get him started. That was the wrong race um, to run him in a graduation plate, but I suppose it was no pressure either. And he's coming to hand nicely now. And um, obviously with these um, apprentice and young jockeys races that they put on because they're just not enough apprentices to go around, the experienced guys, especially when you know there's the Vol straight and you get down to the that'll look up and see 1,600 metres of racetrack without a finish line in sight. Um, a guy like Kiratina Kajeri, who's ridden the track so many times, will know exactly what he's in for, and he'll know exactly how to run him without King's Express. So I think that gives him a huge leg up here in race number seven. I've banked him in the place accumulator. So Connell, I think, has got oodles of potential, but he's also got oodles of problems. Um, you can see that he's, what, four and a half years old, and he had six starts. He's run some very good races along the way. But he's been wrapped up in Kosovo for a lot of his career. It hasn't been plain sailing. And you can even see in his last three starts, he's had respiratory noises. He can hang. Um, I know Mark Cock has his hands full with the son of the United States. If he's feeling well, he could blow them away. But uh, he's just not one to trust, certainly not at the price. And number one, Mardi Gras. Every time I see Jonathan Nassif, I mean, we all love Mardi Gras in the half hour. This lovely big grey sort of oratorio. He's owned over 1.2 million rand. And, and, uh, and Jonathan Nassif says... Want to get that 10th win under the belt? And judging by his uh, starts this year, not impossible that he gets win number 10 sooner rather than later. He's been a lovely horse to follow, been a great servant for the yard. But I think they got the stable companion to beat you. 1, 5 and 6 for Alistair in race number 7. The 8th race, penultimate race on the card, is a C-division handicap. It's over 1,400 metres. Number 1 at 5 to 2. Form update for number 2. Ran sixth, beaten five lengths behind Dreamland. That was on the 23rd of March. Uh, horse number three at six to one. Number four at uh, 28 to 10, Alistair, and a blinker strike. Number five at seven to one. Six at eight to one. Uh, then we have Sharapova, uh, who's been a very frustrating and costly horse if you've gone for her in the past you just have to look at uh, the starting price and the opening price and that tells a story on how much she's cost uh, the betting market uh, that was gone for her as i mentioned uh, nine hillary step is at six to one uh, i'm going to tell you what alistair uh, at this stage after leg four of the pick six with your banker in leg number one it's costing 36 rand uh, just to give you a guide uh, you got some uh, money to play around with you in uh, leg five of that pick six. Okay, we're multiplying by nine. Okay. This is the hardest race on the card. This is the hardest race on the card. Um, it's a field race of the pick six and the jackpots. I've got four horses on my place accumulator, and to, to tip a winner out of that four is easier said than done. I just want to refer to number eight, Sharapova, who's not on my place accumulator, but she's got as much chance as any in this race. She is obviously a half sister to the great Gimme Another, and uh, every win that she racks up is going to do her page a world of good. Um, you can obviously see the hunger and the desire to breed with her, considering the family that she's from, and obviously the half sister. Uh, this is sweeping all before her and she's very likely to rack up another grade one in about 10 days from now but my four numbers here three four five and six um it's a bit of a lucky packet race I'll uh, let me tell you why i've left out the horse that i've left out mia fiore you say five to two on the back of an eight pound penalty nine days ago she lucky who'd allowed this battles to train her because she's got so many problems um it, obviously she's pulled up very well out of that race but on the back of an eight pound penalty Coming out fresh last time, I don't know. I've got my reservations. Number two, rattle bag, just better on the inside track, so that's why I've sidestepped her. Seven, Princess Alaria on the back of her last run, just not for me. Sharapova, I've sidestepped because, you know, she's just been costed to follow, but she would be my next best. And now her step is drawn towards the outside, and although she beat Hard Peaks well last time out, I think this is going to be a little bit tougher for her. She's on the back of a four-pound penalty, which I think is fair, but she is also up in class from... Phillies and May's 74 to Phillies and May's 80. So I think I'm judging that the handicapper may have just caught up with them and I'm Hillary Step. So that's why I've got my numbers three, four, five, and six. Gavin Arena gets on well with number six, Lucy in the sky. Just be not as consistent. Sweet Basil, pound for pound, probably the best horse in the race. If she doesn't need it too badly, um, she could she could be the horse that they all need to beat. And Elysia's love actually surprised me last time out. I know she went off as favourite and she ran in a weak field, but um, 
she took her a while to win a maiden. She won a very weak maiden as well. But since then, she's maintained her form at a reasonable level. So, uh, lucky packet race. Anything can win. And uh, with four horses in the place accumulator, I should survive. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's not a race that I'm looking forward to because just anything can happen there. Well, if we are running uh, after leg four in that pick six, you're well covered. you got the field there and uh, you've given us four horses to play around with. Race number nine, 1,000 metres, merit rated 75 handicap. Betting Alistair, number 128 to 10. Number two is at 5 to 2. Four is at 9 to 2. Six at 15 to 2. Uh, nine is at 13 to 2. It's double figures, the balance. Yeah, there are horses that, um, you know, will possibly be part of your memory bank uh, for different reasons. I must add that Stormy Seas is one of them for me, Alistair. I think of the six wins, I must have backed him, you know, more than 50% uh, when he's won. And uh, remember the days of Randall Simons winning on him, if I'm not mistaken, Cabello, Muzi, those other days. But it was really nice to see him win again, you know, not that he wasn't uh, winning out of turn or anything, because his penultimate start was a good run. So he won at generous odds last time out. And just to, you know, nullify that, that penalty, which wasn't a harsh one. They've gone with the claim for. I can see the source going back to back, Alistair. So can I, Deez, and I don't want to pat myself on the back because to quote uh, Mr. LMF Werner, self-praise is no recommendation. Yes. But uh, I, I tipped Stormy Seas last time out um, on this show and Raheel phoned me afterwards all excited thinking that I'd got the absolute lot. But sadly, this, uh, the, the, the minor support wasn't my support. I let him run loose. And he can very definitely back it up. So in the pick six, okay, let's let's talk about the place accumulator here, Dees, because my PA numbers are one and four. Siberian Steel and uh, in the ether. Siberian Steel, I hope he's not developed a bad habit of losing his race at the start. His last two runs, he's shown a little bit of demons at the start. He should never have lost his last run behind Stormy. So he's going to watch it again. It was amazing the way that he quickened and a few starts past the post to his lengths in front. Um, he's got Nervin Nassili on board, so obviously a lot of the weights here are nullified because it is a young rider's race. But uh, 57 and a half kilos on his back, I'd like to believe that if he doesn't lose it at the start, he will win the race. But you just got to you got to close your eyes and trust that he's going to get away on terms. For in the ether has been in the peak of health at the moment. Um, she runs very well. She's she's consistent. She probably is best on the inside track. But with that said, she's performed nicely enough down the ball straight. Caden Brew is up for Grant Maroon. He's ridden this horse before, and I think experience on certain horses comes for a lot when a lot of these last riding horses for the very very first time on a track for the first time. So those are my PA numbers. Pick six include numbers two and ten. Stormy sees for the reason given can't go off him just yet Trent May who's on board I think he's one win away from going down to two and a half kilos and he's got 19 might be 18 I'm under correction there and then any old price number 10 dark tired put this horse into your pick six put him into your trifectas and quartets JC Burtis the nephew of Byron Burtis takes the ride he'll know the ball quite well I think he wrote a lot of work for Byron when he was uh, during school holidays etc dark tides down to a very 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 attractive mark I know he ran off this mark last time but um, I think he needed that run. He'll be better with that run under the butt or dark tide. And he is, what, the second highest earner in this race. He's more than capable of turning them over. So don't let him run loose in the pick sixes. One, two, four, and ten are your numbers there, Alistair. Can you confirm that for the pick six? One, two, four, and ten in the pick six. These, those are winning numbers. Okay, we'll wait for Alistair to uh, give us his suggested bet. But I'm going to read out... Uh, what we'll call uh, a pick six for the show. Unplanned, but as we went along, I've jotted the numbers down. Ten a banker by one, two, and five, by five, six, seven, and nine, by one, five, and six, by the field at the time of recording. It's multiplied by nine, by one, two, four, and ten. That spend is uh, 130 Rand, which is 10% or one, two, nine six is a full bet or oh, i just wrote down in leg one uh, if you want to go with the cover there's two horses that dominate the betting and you want to include number one so it'll be one in ten you just multiply that perm out by two and then it'll be 260 rand which is 10 percent or 2592 which is a full bet but one two nine six 130 rand 10 percent i think well done with that alistair uh, you've managed to narrow things down nicely and uh, hopefully things fall into place, especially if that banker arrives and we can have some fun for the day. But over to you for your suggested bet of the day.
Mm, and if these exotics land, there'll be extra Easter eggs to be had this weekend. So it's a good weekend to be winning every day. Every meeting, obviously, a good day to be winning. So here's the place to accumulate the, the suggested bet. Just bear in mind to all the viewers that that's a joint effort of the pick six. So uh, we can we can carve the turkey between these and I and, uh, and those that uh, that get involved. 25 past one is the start of the PA. Four and five on the first leg. Take your place in Tipperary by Banker. Number 10, Coeta. I uh, Two and five in the Blue Moon and Master Ariano. By five and six, Can't Catch Me in Viva de Janeiro. By Banker, five Kings Express. I think that will take all the beating. Race eight, hardest race in the card. I've gone three, Elysia's Love. Four, Sweet Basil. Five, Just Been Asked. And six, Lucy in the Sky. And then final leg, one Siberian still in four in the ether. But the money maker in the last race, if you're in trouble, the horse is going to make you money with number 10, Outside. I think they'll run at worst in the top four. Well, thanks to Alistair Korn and all that's left for me to say, Alistair, to yourself, Candice and your loved ones and your family, all the best over the Easter weekend and uh, uh, wish you guys all the best, uh, Alistair. It's, it's a long weekend, it's a busy weekend and uh, you just need to keep yourself safe because we know over these uh, festive holidays that uh, the roads are busy, etc. But you just want to be around your loved ones and uh, enjoy what is going to be a, a nice, festive, long weekend, Alistair. 100% decent to you and uh, and everyone uh, celebrating to you and Sarai and uh, everyone else that uh, that is going to be enjoying the long weekend. I mean, it never stops for us. Uh, we've got racing on Monday as well, and, and I love racing on a Monday. No, no quiet days in our lives. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be a, a good time ahead, and uh, hopefully everyone enjoys the Easter. And hopefully there are a few winners that go along with it as well. I'm just now that you speak about Monday, uh, something has just uh, sprung to mind. I don't know if you've ever seen this uh, in your time racing, but I've never seen it, and it's not an April Fool joke. Go to Monday and have a look at that juvenile plate. There are 15 runners carded. <laughs> 15 runners carded, of which a coupling of 11. Have you ever seen that from one stable? Uh, I'm thinking Kimberley days, maybe. Peter not, Miller. I don't but know not 11. No, I, I don't know if he ever went as far as 11. Never. I, I've never. I've, Kimberley days, I can hear you. Uh, 7, 8. I've seen 8. <laughs> I've never in my life seen 11. <laughs> How would you like to tell the uh, the jockeys that you're on first choice? I think I think the other 10 will be thinking, no, 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 no. They can't be a first choice. Yeah, let's, let's go, guys. Yeah, but that is it. Alistair, again, thanks for your time and hopefully things fall into place. All the best, my brother. Sure, buddy. Thank you so much. Yep, that's Alistair Cohen. And to you, the Valued Racing fan, well, we wish Alistair Cohen. Well, to you, the Valued Racing fan, all the best. All the best uh, to yourself, your loved ones and your family over this uh, Easter weekend. And all the best always may turn out to be a lovely day for you if you're playing at the Val on this Thursday. Uh, find all the winners, make a huge profit, and uh, until we meet again, you take care. Salani Ashley.